Halit, Halit Mall, artist, producer, designer, whatever the fuck. I do shit. So, where are you from, Halit Mall? Uh, initially, I was born in America. Uh, I lived in New York for the first three years of my life. Then, from like three years old to 18, I was living in Barbados and went to school here. Yeah. Okay. So you would say that, but you would say though that you were Barbadian then, I guess, seeing as you've spent most of your life. It's, it's shaped the formative years of your life. Yeah, B. I don't really fuck with America. You don't? Not really? Nah. I don't fuck with America. Not at all? I got my papers. I'm Barbadian. All right. I feel that. Real I shit. Feel that. Like, you know so I mean? how are you, I've heard from you that you spend your, you used to spend your summers in America with your dad. Yeah, ish. So... Both of my parents live in New York State. Okay. Um, they were young when they got married, mm -hmm. and they pushed off, and you know, every now and again, like for summers, some summers I would go, some summers I wouldn't go. But yeah, when I go down there, like I used to divide my time between staying with either of them. Okay. Okay. So yeah. how did you get into music? Um, when I was going to school at QC, there was a man named Ross Levine, and he was rapping. Well, that's and, Rose Cool? Yeah, Rose Cool. You know what I mean? And the man was hard. And I was like, yo, he ain't as hard as me. And I just learned and start rapping. I was like, I can mash up this man. And so said, so done. So what age was that? What age was that? I was about 11 or 12. 11, you started, you see, officially picked at your pen yeah. at 11. Yeah, but before then, I used to like download Lil Wayne on like Aries and shit. Like I had every single Lil Wayne song on my Aries. I used to listen to like all my uncle like old rap CDs, like uh, Outkast and, and Eminem, and, and I was actually into the craft of music, like like rap music. Yeah. Like I actually cared about the technical aspect. Yeah, of it. yeah, yeah. That was the most important part. Okay. And then the producing of shit came after that, no? Because I had failed music in school. Okay, that's interesting. I would say my real, real beginnings with instrumental music though was like when I used to play violin. Like I started playing violin in primary school. Yeah. And then I stopped with that because they had want me to pay money and I, <laughs> I didn't have money. So I said. That's typical, you know, that's, that's, that's the reason why we started doing rap in the first place. Yeah, you know, though, because rap shit. is free. Yeah. You could just rap and like, it didn't cost you, it's a freestyle, you yeah. know what I mean? You go, if you want to be on the table as your background, that's, that's your music. Yeah, though. And then. We're producing the same shit. You all know how that shit go. Like, you know what I mean? I don't go out and buy shit except, the com except for the computer, so. Exactly. It was just, that was just how I started making music. Yeah. So you say that Outkast and Eminem influenced you? Yeah, though. Like, all right. Andre 2000, that was my nigga, for It's real. quirky, so you like, you like that, you like that. Yeah, though, because he like, he's just imaginative, right? And like all the all the Gemini rappers that that too, like real imaginative. Are oh, you a Gemini? Yeah, though. Uh, so that was my thing, right? So I gravitate to that sort of shit, like yeah. Biggie and Pa and like Kanye, you know, like all those men just like sit in them head, dog, and like they all like push like a very like there's a world, you know what I mean? M, I don't I'm not sure when he was born, but yeah. he's still like that same sort of vibe is is a all encompassing sort of approach. To music, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, with me, I I have the same sort of vibe where it's like I I have like a very academic approach to my music. So when I like sit down in front of music, like I don't just be making music to make music, like I just do research on shit. Like I have subject matter, like no matter how cryptic my shit is, like I am very like involved in like yeah. making I've, sure that in the end is like a thing. And I've I noticed find that. I've noticed that. Um, what was your song? Auntie SD. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that right. project, like beginning to end, is like life and death, like alchemy, like creation of worlds that use the universe, like Prince Midas as a universe in itself, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what you're doing when you're making a body of work, like, and I find that's, those are the artists that I was just gravitate to, like, men that actually used to, like, make a world around their shit as opposed to just being, like, man, I'm just cool as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, it don't last that long yeah, to just be, like, so cool. you want some substance. Yeah, though, 100%. So, circling back, have you met any of the people that have influenced you? Yeah, though. Who? Have you, can you name some? Man, I... I met some people, dog. I just met some people met some, that I read. Right? Yeah, right, dog. Just like, keep no. down, just keep down the Yeah, dog. That's you know no what problem. Mean? That's no problem. So you said you started at 11. You started young. So you started releasing music around that time? Or was that just for your friends? 
when I was, yeah, I have start. I feel like I started releasing music when I was like 12 or 13. Cause there was like a, cause I always used to do like rap shit. Like how to, they had a, um, what was it? Uh, a talent show. Yeah. Star Vibe. And like, that was my big, like real, real debut. Cause yeah. there was like a rap battle between me and another man. Yeah. And like, it was a big scene. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, boy. And then I started doing this for real, for real. So then I remember this one time the man did a cypher. And I went to actually seeing Mon Ross. I went to his house and recorded the fucking cipher in his um, closet beat. Yeah. With like a salt over the mic. I feel. I you. feel like that was the vibe. Yeah, yeah. And there was a salt over the mic. I remember that for sure. Underground days. Yeah, dog. It was some real ratchet shit. <laughs> and it was just in his like room somewhere, be. And I just remember that being so empowering, like listening back to myself. And I feel like when I seriously, seriously, like was like actually put out music when I was fourteen. Yeah. Um, this man named Strat Carter, who is like my mentor, my fucking he's a, like he's a producer, isn't he? Yeah. So if you ever hear about the Pounders, if you ever hear about like I talking about like OG Barbadian men that like opened the door for like rapping and thing from like the '90s and thing. You know what I mean? These are men that was like, yo, like we fuck with these tapes. You know what I mean, yeah, dog? Actually, like the man was actually, listening to tapes, dog. Man not, was like, yo, I fuck with these tapes. I mean, I was to the, man, the source and Yeah, the dog. Stuff. Baggy pants to all, like just straight up, like thug mentality, you know what I mean? Like real motherfuckers, dog. Like he opened the door for all them men because he was that man producer, he was recording, he was also rapping. So like I had a link to the pounders, right? Because the man was my barber. So one the pounders was your barber? No, no, no one of the pounders was oh. my barber. <laughs> no, not strap. One of the pounders was my barber, right? And I asked him, I'm like, yo, where are y'all men used to record? Like, you know any man that was like recording music properly? Cause my, I don't really got a setup right now, right? Yeah. I was recording music on my Sony Vio at the time. Like, oh, I was recording like. It's definitely back in the day. Yeah, this, yeah, real far. And then, but yeah, Strat was cool. Cause I remember I did the first few sessions paid. And then the man was like, yo, I fuck with you. Like, I didn't start like letting you record here and shit. And then that's when I recorded my first project, Austin Conti. I was 14 years old. He took a, like a gamble on me. You know what I mean? Um, I put up. Aussie sorry. Content, that, that, I think that was your thing. as your first break, to be honest. I think that's when yeah. Fader magazine started catching wind to you. Yeah. You were in Fader at 16. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. Like all those songs and shit, I wrote all those when I was like 14, 15. Like I recorded most of that music, like, cause I had turned 16, like two days after Aussie County came out. So I made all that music like prior. So like 14, 15 is really when like all that shit got like manifested in me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I remember, actually there's a lot of players involved in this shit, but most importantly, um, with Oxycontin, yeah, that was a big deal. Cause you know what I mean? I wasn't getting radio play cause the subject matter of my music was dark. It wasn't necessarily the type of shit people wanted to hear from somebody my age, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, but how did you deal with how did you deal with that critical acclaim at sixteen? You know, being in being in one of the major music publications and still going to school with all, still going to high school with all your friends. It was I mean, it, like it grounded me though, cause like I was like I put Oxycontin, then I went to New York. After that, I had met like Frank Ocean. I get, like all right, just do this shit. Like I mean, like Frank Ocean, like all the future and shit. You know what I mean? Like I was like with like motherfuckers that like I was like seen on the internet, dog. Like for real, like fuck, like freaking out. You know what I mean? If but then I would just come out of Barbados and like man, I was just like, all right. You just you're just right. Yeah, I'm just mean because like I'm not I'm not a star man. Like the thing, like, I'm not pushing that. Like I'm pushing me. Like it's me. Like I'm, I'm the most important part of this thing. Like yeah. so. Like, for me, it was just really interesting, but it was cool at the same thing because I don't like a lot of attention too. So, either way, like, at that age, it was fine because I wasn't really thinking about, you know, like, get. I was just making all music. the girls and yeah, no, I never, I never care about nothing. So, I still about being a, a rap star. Yeah, though. Yeah. yeah. But you, you, you just mentioned that you weren't getting radio play. You, you clashed with some local DJs yeah. over that. Uh, yeah, could you, 100%. Could you, could, could you talk about that? <laughs> Dog, honestly, right? I just want men to know, right? Straight up, I am about unity and thing, but you can't keep doing this thing to the artists in Barbados, like, for real. I'm not even talking about me. We're not going to play me. But I'm telling you straight up, like, yo, Puffy, blank. 
Y'all men need to come together and like make this thing happen for real. Because really and truly, musicians get broken by DJs. Look at Cali, look at any of these notable DJs overseas. These men are taking artists on their way and building them up, though. This is like, this is actually great for y'all men. I'm talking straight to you, so if you're watching this, you know what I mean? But like, for real, like, this is going to only boost your profile for people to know that you can bust an artist, though. So fuck me, you don't go out like me, but like, bust an artist in Barbados, because at the end of the day, like, Barbados won't have any culture or anything to call its own unless y'all do that. Yeah, and that's all I gotta say about that. I agree with you, you know. I, I remember that Cypher Sounds. Yeah. He was the person that gave Rihanna her co sign. And oh. without that co sign, what, what is anything, we though? Might not, we might not have the biggest pop star in the world today. Because what I'm telling you, bro, is like you have these media outlets, you have these opportunities to put someone on a stage in front of how many people in Barbados, 300,000, like however many fucking people listening to the radio is a fraction of that. I don't know, I don't know the statistics. But let me be real, dog, men is cheap. So like, you know what you want to push on the pipeline. You know, you're, you know what you want to do. Like, come on, like, let's just do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's too stagnant here. Like, we need more shit happening. You know so, what I'm saying? So why do you think your music specifically hasn't gone through the radio? I mean, Obviously, crude content. Like I'm, I'm very original. Be like, I'm very unique artist. Like it doesn't fit. It doesn't fit all the time. Even Prince Midas, as accessible as it was, and as you know, hard hitting and 808, like heavy. The beats were like, I don't know. Be I can't sit here and tell you any reason other than people just don't do it, and that's okay. You know what I mean? We live in a world with people with their own free will, and that's all right. You know.